Reminder, Ian Miles Chong was a Reddit modder. Yeah, he was literally a Reddit mod. He's literally Reddit. Holy shit. I mean, yeah, he was. During the early 2010s, he was a moderator on Reddit, moderating some of his biggest subreddits. He was eventually banned for paid promotions. He hadn't disclosed to the site. He was also working as a games journalist. Yeah, he was woke. For those of you who don't know, Ian Miles Wrong was like one of those annoying woke video game journalists. Yeah. <clears throat> he worked for Game Ranks, The Guardian, Ars Technica. When some of his older chat logs were leaked, they showed his edgelordy behavior where he praised Adolf Hitler. He apologized but blamed everything on the toxic gaming community. He also swatted a fellow YouTuber. Sometime later, he attacked his toxic community again. Uh, in for the gamer... Uh, in for Gamergate? A cultural online debate revolving around games journalism? Yeah, okay, this person... Is, is fucking, is he all right? Yeah, totally. Gamergate was about ethics and video game journalism. What? Yeah. As a socialist, can you even be gifted subs? Doesn't that mean money for you? And that means capitalism? Yes. Capitalism is, uh, is making money. Socialism is being broke and poor. He also started supporting Trump and rather strong right-wing views around like 2016. And then he became like full-blown right-wing grifter. Uh, one hilarious, one hilarious aspect of Ian Miles Wrong's uh, entire existence is that according to, uh, I might be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure Ian Miles uh, Wrong has never stepped foot inside of the continental United States. He actually is operating on u.s hours as a poster from if i'm not was it is it malaysia pretty sure he lives in malaysia the entire time which is one of the most surprising parts about ian miles wrong's existence is that like he larps as someone I don't recall writing this. It's clear that this podcaster hangs out with Antifa, though, because they're always posting stuff like this in my replies. I'm sure I'd be disappointed if I was a listener. <laughs> what? Hi, Ian. Thanks for your concern, but I will probably not take advice on moral culpability from a man who wrote a column called Incel Corner for Milo Yiannopoulos or advice on hate speech from the author of the following. All the best. Um... Pretty sure Ian has uh, apologized for these takes, by the way. But he was a Reddit mod, too. Here's the note Reddit sent to the moderators threatening them if they don't reopen. So, some of, some of Reddit's largest communities are still on lockdown as a consequence of the uh, Reddit API changes. In an effort to protest said API changes, uh, a lot of the largest subreddits have uh, gone private. And uh, the the uh, CEO, the owner of Reddit basically said, fuck you. I think this is a... With uh, Dexcom G7, you can achieve diabetes results without finger sticks. Nice. See how exercise affects your glucose, making it easier to spend more time in range and lower your A1C. Manage your diabetes with confidence. I love getting some of the most popular pages on. I love getting targeted ads about diabetes medication. Thank you. Reddit are still dark. The message boards known as subreddits are a sort of gathering place with thousands, sometimes millions of people, and they're led by an army of unpaid volunteer moderators, similar to Wikipedia. Earlier this week, those moderators organized a blackout, effectively collapsing the website in protest of its new plan to charge third-party platforms. You see, for years, Reddit has been one of the most popular sites on the Internet, but it has failed to make the kind of money off its success that platforms like Instagram or YouTube have. So now, leaders at Reddit seem to want to change how things work. But has the platform become so reliant on its community that it has somehow lost all control? 
Well, NBC's Dave Ingram joins us now. Uh, Dave, you and I sit together all day, every day. It's fantastic to have you here uh, together uh, in person. So you had an exclusive interview with Steve Huffman, the CEO. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, how does he explain this dramatic shift in how uh, Reddit is going to work and why it is uh, that, you know, th this new policy has created such an incredible <laughs> kerfuffle over there? Yeah, so he's a, he's a co-founder of Reddit. So he's been doing this for 18 years off and on. He's left for a while and now he's back and he's looking and en emphasizing reddit as a business mm -hmm. that it's it's not profitable it's losing money he wants to be able to at least make a little money for the company for his, potentially its investors they're looking at an ipo where mm -hmm. they could sell stock to the public at some point just like uh, better or google has in the past and uh, this is a sort of a watershed moment where you've got this standoff between the ceo who wants to implement these changes to get more revenue and these users, some of them have been on Reddit for more than a decade. They don't want to see big changes. I mean, that's the crazy thing about this, right? When we think about Reddit, right, the thing that made it so popular and so effective, I mean, the whole business model really is built on these unpaid moderators who for 18 years have been the backbone of, of the whole point of being there, right? They have these little sort of intellectual kingdoms that they kind of run. You go to that very specific subreddit for information about that thing and get involved with the community and the rest of it, right? Now suddenly he's referring to these folks as landed gentry. What What is, you know, what's, what's his plan here? I mean, his whole business was built on them and now he seems to be making them very, very angry. How does he go forward from this? That's a, that's a really, it's a really charged term. And what he's saying is that these moderators, they're sort of uh, running these fiefdoms where they're not accountable to anyone. So landed gentry, people who hand down their property from one generation to the next, dukes and duchesses, uh, they're not accountable. And he's saying that their sort of moderators are handing off uh, control that's so funny. Like, this is the most Reddit way of arguing, which makes this hilarious. He's the fucking CEO. And he's basically implementing digital enclosures because he wants to make more money while simultaneously yelling at the fucking unpaid moderators, claiming that they are the ones who are abusing their power. What the fuck? Like, and the reason why the unpaid monitors are fucking uh, complaining about it is because the API tools made by independent third-party uh, uh, coders make the platform more visible, more viewable, make the consumer experience better. Which, unironically translates to more eyeballs on reddit it's it, it makes it easier to fucking moderate it's so stupid he should know this as far as i understand he moderated r slash jailbait All of these communities from yeah. one person to the next. I have to say, I think it's sort of, it's kind of, it's rich, right, to hear the founder of a major uh, platform uh, describe uh, his unpaid moderators as dukes and duchesses. But okay, uh, you know, thinking now sort of at the bigger picture, I mean. It's funny when, like, the NBC News, like, economist analysis, like, the analyst desk is saying, like, this is a ridiculous comparison. That's how you know your ass is fucking cooked. Now, his ass being cooked in the public sphere and his, uh, and, and uh, him being able to implement whatever changes he feels he must do uh, is two entirely different things. Like, people can protest, people can say, fuck you, but ultimately, uh, you know, he can do whatever he wants. The unfortunate consequence of, of uh, people getting used to using a website like this We've basically seen this exact same we've basically seen this exact same uh situation play out on Twitter. Steve didn't moderate R slash jailbait. There was a bug where moderators could add anyone as a moderator, so they added him and took the screenshot. Oh.
Do you think that this pressure that, that Huffman seems to feel and the changes we've seen at places like Twitter means sort of the end of the free, open, gathering place that was the Internet? There are, there are fewer and fewer of these old school internet places where it just seems like it's everything's open. That isn't true. He literally sent them awards personally for being such a big subreddit. No shot. Uh, Google search also heavily depends on Reddit. If you want actual info from humans instead of ad farm pages and Google search also heavily depends on Reddit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, Reddit is like better than Quora. You know what I mean? It's 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 a useful tool for hyper specific circumstances, especially when you're like interested in some niche subjects or porn, niche porn. That too. You're not inundated with ads all the time. We have Wikipedia, Craigslist is still around, some of these older communities. Reddit has been around since 2005. It predates a lot of other social media right around the time of YouTube and and Facebook is when it was founded. Yeah. And, you know, if it, if it changes significantly, if it even goes away or it gets diminished, I think a lot of people are going to be yearning and searching for something like that that doesn't feel so commercial. David Ingram, uh, fantastic reporting. Great to have you with us. Uh, everybody, give him a follow. It is really, really important to do so. Anyway, I figured out why my graphics card wasn't working, how to get Uber to stop charging me on Reddit. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of useful information on there. It's like, it's just like any other platform. Okay. There's a lot of annoying, awful shit on there. But then there's also a lot of, uh, useful things on there as well. Um, so I thought Reddit CEO, Steve Huffman came off bad in his interview with the verge this one, this new one with the NBC News is disqualifying. Reddit's unpopular changes were inspired by Elon Musk's layoffs and cost cutting, like not paying bills at Twitter. In an interview Thursday with NBC News, wait, do we have this interview? I want to watch this. I want to watch this. Steve Huffman is huffing on something, dude. It's a written interview? God damn it, really? Um, Huffman said he saw Musk is reaffirming that, reaffirming that we can build a really good business in this space at our scale. Now they've taken the dramatic road, he added, and I guess I can't sit here and say that we're not either, but I think there's a lot of opportunity here. My man saw the world's wealthiest billionaire lose like gigantic sums of money and uh, purchase of uh, was forced to. He watched the world's wealthiest guy get forced by a Delaware Commerce Court to purchase a company at an insane fucking price that he basically uh, memed into existence. And he saw that that valuation dramatically decreased by two thirds. And he went, That's a good idea. I should do that leading up to my fucking initial public offering. That is the most Reddit-ass shit, dude. I mean, he's perfect for the fucking website, I'll be honest. In case you haven't seen Reddit's interview with The Verge, this one that's one to behold too. A tech CEO basically jealously complaining that a solo indie developer found out how to do something he couldn't figure out how to monetize Reddit. We see companies like Google or Apple giving, you know, three months, six months, a year for these sort of deadlines. Tell me which companies were Google and Apple subsidizing for 10 years that you're thinking of. They weren't subsidizing, but they work with their developers. They need apps for their platforms as well. Was there like a Google clone out there where they take all of Google's data and run their own ads on it that Google let survive for 10 years? Does that exist? Another app store that Apple allows to exist? I don't know if I agree with the characterization that Apollo is a fully direct competitor of Reddit. Okay, hold on. Time out. You go to the app store, you type in Reddit, you get two options, right? There's Apollo. You go to one, 
it's my business, and you look at our ads, use our products, that's 95% of our iOS users. The rest go to Apollo, which uses our logo or something like it, takes our data for free and resells it to users, making a 100% margin. And instead of using our app, they use that app. Is that not competitive? He's mad at the official Reddit app is the worst thing ever made. Yeah, make a better app, you donkey. Reddit bought Alien Blue to get rid of people using it. It's just... His interview on NPR was the first one since the API prices were announced, air, aired this morning. Like an actual, like an actual back and forth that we can listen to. Protests against a new fee structure at social media site Reddit have meant that large parts of his content went dark this week. It's a big deal for some of the 57 million people who use a discussion site daily, and it also reflects some larger shifts in social media. So CEO Steve Huffman talked with our own Steve Inski for his first broadcast interview since the protest began. Reddit users keep threads of conversation going on thousands of topics from politics to pop culture to porn. Many people use it through apps on their phones, and some of those so-called third-party apps say they will shut down now that Reddit wants to bill them millions of dollars to use its content. That's why operators of almost 9,000 communities on Reddit protested this week by having their conversations go dark. When CEO Steve Huffman came on the line, he insisted the protest only affected a small part of the business. So Reddit is about 100,000 communities, right? And these communities cover every kind of topic imaginable. There was some disruption, but mostly on our back end because the shape of Reddit changed. But in terms of the business, there's plenty of content. Most of our users got to enjoy that content. You know, that's really what Reddit is all about. I want to make sure of what you're saying here. If someone is protesting or boycotting your business, they want to cost you money, which would influence you. I think I hear you asserting that you have not really been cost a lot of money or a lot of trouble here. Is that right? It has not cost a lot of money. It's been a fair amount of trouble in the sense that this is what we're working on this week. But from a business point of view, not particularly disruptive. So did the protesters persuade you to change anything at all about your strategy? No, we've had protests like this before. So for some context, Reddit is a platform powered by people. The communities are made by people. It's a democratic platform. And so this is not the first protest that we've seen. However, in this case, we've been subsidizing other businesses for free for a long time. Uh, Kaya is back from the groomers. And I just got to show you this before I put her in the pen. The groomers put a LGBT bow on her. Oh, she smells so good. Hello. Chill. They groomed her. Probably very hungry as well. Um, they groomed her into making LGBT decisions. Spez the tech bro who has a doomsday bunker and thinks there'll be a ruler in the post-apocalyptic world. Nice. We're stopping that. That is not a negotiable point. We are simply in an unsustainable position, and so we need to get into a sustainable situation. And so that's the core of this change. I have so many things to follow up on, and this is one of them. Bobby Allen, our tech correspondent, spoke with the founder of Apollo, which is one of the third-party apps that has been using Reddit and has built its business on Reddit. Christian Selig is his name. And he has a question not just about what you're doing, but how you're doing it. Why, he asks, did Reddit decide on just a 30-day period for this transition, which gives them, in his view, virtually no opportunity to adjust their business model to the way you're adjusting yours? So we actually started talking about these changes, including with Christian and the other third-party apps, back in April. They all knew this was coming. What they didn't know was the price. Now, the two largest apps, Apollo and another one called Reddit is Fun, mm -hmm. have just decided they don't want to participate going forward. So they're shutting down at the end of this month. 
The other third-party apps we are in conversations with, and there are areas of opportunity to be more flexible, to give longer transition times, to go a little deeper. For folks who want to have productive conversations with us, we're here, we're having those conversations. The folks at Apollo, I guess, would not say that they don't feel like participating, but that they cannot pay the price that you are charging. Is there a case to be made that you've charged too much here, that you are going to drive people out of business? The cost is the cost. So it costs us tens of millions of dollars a year in pure infra, meaning infrastructure, right. all the work that goes into supporting that. And then the opportunity cost of not having those users on our advertising platform right. is really significant. So at the end of the day, it's simply expensive to run an app like Reddit. But it can be done, and if you want to do it, we're here to try to make it work. So you would deny that you're trying to drive the third-party apps out of business? I deny that, yes. But like I said, we're still talking to a handful of the other third-party apps, and we'll see if we can make it work. You probably know that some analysts are connecting a lot of different news items from the world of social media. This Reddit story, what's happening at Twitter, what has happened at Facebook, and are concluding that you are in this sector that has had a business model that just fundamentally doesn't make sense, maybe never made sense, the idea that people would use everything for free and then they would be monetized through advertising or some other way. And we're now finding out there just isn't enough money to sustain that. Is that the way that you see social media right now? Are you telling me that Facebook, one of the largest and most profitable companies of all time, is not making it work? <laughs> I'm telling you, I think their profits have gone down, sure. And I see, I don't know what's going on at Twitter. So you tell me if there's a story there or not. So the business model absolutely works. So if you look at two of the largest companies on earth, Google and Facebook, mm -hmm. they make a lot of money. The business model works. Now, Twitter and Reddit, we're a lot smaller than those companies. But, you know, we have aspirations to be bigger. Our changes are a reflection of that. We had a tough week last week as well. We um, let some people go in a layoff. But long term... It's actually a great business model, and it can be really effective. And I think one of the things I like about it is it's actually also fairly transparent. As a user, you know what you're getting. Right? You come to a platform like Reddit or any of the others we've mentioned, and you see the ads. It's not complicated. Mm -hmm. It can be complex, but it's not complicated. I love that. I love looking at interviews with CEOs because you, like, they, they demonstrate so perfectly that they just like that meritocracy is just like fucking bullshit. And it's just some guy. It's just some guy oftentimes with like sociopathic tendencies that has been put in that position of power due to uh, said sociopathic tendencies. I fucking love this man, dude. I'm a Steve Stan. The sponsorship is so hard to spot. Fuck him, lying ass. I mean, it's ultimately a sucks to suck type of situation where like you didn't do the right thing. You didn't figure out monetization on your platform. And now you're mad at like another platform. Normally under regular commerce, what you're supposed to do is, you know, is a free market. What you're supposed to do is basically, you know, either buy them or make better monetizable products. This is the easy way out. And anyone who says that, uh, anyone who says that, any pro-capitalist who says that uh, this actually, this decision is like perfectly valid, is not even a good capitalist. Okay? That's it. It's just like, it's a very, it's a very easy way to try and farm uh, a, a little bit more revenue. When someone else basically took the product and made it more viewable, made it more watchable, and actually is monetizing off of it. You know, you see the ads, but you also don't see the petabytes of user data. They are selling behind the scenes as well. Yeah. He offered to buy and then got mad. It will take some time, but Reddit is replaceable 100%. I think so, too, because it's mostly UGC. Well, Steve Hoffman, thanks very much. I've enjoyed talking with you.
Anyway, I felt like the boomer here, but I've been using the Reddit app forever and I really don't see a problem with it. Literally less than 5% of Reddit users use a third-party app anyway. They aren't legit competition. Yeah, no, he just wants to... He, he wants to milk it, dude. He wants to milk. That's what it is. This is not like a serious situation. This is just a milking operation. It's the same... It's an even sillier version of what like people usually do. Okay? It's a, it's a sillier version of what people usually do, which is uh, immediately fucking go back to their laborers, the people who are generating the value, and farm them for, uh, and, and reduce them to uh, say yes to lower wages or engage in mass layoffs, which uh, this guy did, uh, ultimately forcing the reduced workforce to take on the same job that the prior workforce was engaging with. But I don't know. I just, I find it really stupid. Reddit only exists because we boycotted Dig or some shit doing like this at over a year, over a decade ago. One point of contention, at least for moderators, is that third-party apps provide more modding tools for mobile devices. Yeah. This would be like you telling your Hassan Industrial Complex to shut down. I, actually, you know what? You're not even fucking wrong about that. Except the only difference is... I'm the one who is like retaining the rights to my own image. Whereas like the fucking CEO isn't making any uh, original content that other people are basically uh, uh, promoting or other people are basically cutting and chopping up. You know what I mean? So I have more of a right to do that and it would be significantly more understandable to do something like that. And yet I still don't because I see the value in it. I see the value in it. You know what I mean? He does not have any value. Like Reddit as an application has one fucking value. And that is a forum that people go to. That's it. So the servers and the backend stuff is the only value in this circumstance. It's more like if Toyota is banning all third-party GPS modules. Is that something that Toyota did? I would be surprised. Yeah, but you don't have to deal with the infrastructure. I understand that. I understand that. What the fuck? Is this a joke? Twitch star signs $100 million deal with rival platform? 